And you can hear me? I sure can. Holy shit. Thank you. <laughs> now, Trevor, man, I like to say this with every person on the show is welcome to the podcast, man. We had a glitchy ass start, but welcome to the show, good man. It's an honor to have you here, actually. Thanks, man. I'm happy to be here. Of course. And might I add, it seems like you're having a really good week <laughs> because, I mean, you got a show out now that's coming out here, I believe, and everything else. Like, it must be really fun for you. And even in the middle of like craziness that's happening right now. It is. It's a crazy time, you know. Uh, it's my birthday this coming Friday, and I, you know, really couldn't have asked for, you know, better timing for the release oh, of the show. Shit. So, yeah, it's been fun, yeah. Happy early birthday to you, man. <laughs> like, did you, when did you figure that out? It had to be one of those, like, okay, we're doing this here for the release, all this other jazz. And are like, oh, okay. Oh, wait a minute, it's my birthday. Ooh, I I'm going to have a drink tonight. <laughs> well, let's see. We uh, We wrapped production of the show in March, and then I think it was about, we, we found out in about June or so when the release date was. And then uh, it wasn't until I started, you know, uh, kind of coordinating with my PR people that it was like, oh, cool, early birthday present. That'll be a fun week. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, I've done acting for a while now and stuff in filmmaking, and never have I had anything yet on a really good, like, birthday. If I'm working on my birthday, it's usually because of day job or something like that. Like, it's never had that chance. So, man, that's awesome. Are you going to do anything special? Uh, I'm recording another podcast that day, so. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean. As far as like going out and doing anything with friends, I think you know we all know that you know the 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 2020 has taken care of that. So uh, yeah, it's yeah. all good. I'm sure I'll do something fun. That's good though. I mean, at least do something like shit. I've found out that you no know, video game dates are seem to be the best thing to do these days with guys. I don't know if you do that with friends or if say I just Zoom calls those seem to be the best. Like I don't know. I figured out I like. Hmm? I'm reveling in being in a Marvel TV show at the moment, so right now, kind of can only go downhill from there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's very, very true. I mean, how long have you been acting though? Because I'm, I'm very, I'm, my career's been only for like two years in film and comics and then arts and shit. But how long have you been acting? Um, geez, how much time you got? Uh, oh. you know, I'm going. <laughs> I was, I was just joking with, I was just joking with a friend. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be a, a 20 year overnight success. Oh wow! Um, <laughs> I mean, I started acting when I was uh, when I was like in high school. Um, <laughs> interestingly enough, my very first uh, stage play was with me, my my now still friend Drew, and our then friend Michael Bublé. So it was a very wow. weird. A uh, weird way to start. My, you know, we all went to school together. Um, and then when I was like 15, uh, a touring production of a, of a local youth theater had came to my school. And I was clamoring for something outside of school, something bigger, something better, something to help me get my, you know, dip my toe in the water of the industry. And that just kind of took hold. And then, uh, I mean, I did, I did a little bit of work uh, in film and TV when I was a teenager, but it wasn't really until my 20s that I, I really kind of started studying the craft and really getting a sense of, of my process and, and who I was going to be in the industry, yeah. Well, that's kind of the age that I think a lot of us tend to do it. Like, I think, well, before I turned in the 20s, I was doing voiceover schooling and one other, shout out to Cameron Bowen, who got me to go do that, a friend of mine. And, you know, we, I did the voice acting school a little bit beforehand, and then I did a lot more in the studying of the craft. And so at least because I do acting, mm -hmm. uh, design props, writing for scripts and all that jazz for films and features and all that jazz shit. But I think it was the 20s where it started to get more serious in the study. And I think that's a lot of people because if, like you can do stuff when you're a teenager, but I think it doesn't really get more serious until you hit your 20s. I think I think I don't know. Well, but that's what I've seen with a lot of people. It depends because, you know, for from the time I was around 18 until I was around, you know, well, still now to this day. So for over 20 years, I used to uh, to teach kids uh, who wanted to work in film and TV. And, you know, you, you, you find these odd little little gems that kind of come fully formed and they're so emotionally aware and, and grounded. And, mm -hmm. you know, some of them, they're just like they're 12 and 13 years old and they're just incredible. And you don't know how they got that way. Um, but, yeah. yeah, for a lot of a lot of people, they, have, they kind of have to experience a life and go travel and get their hearts broken before they have anything to, to bring, you know, to acting. Cause you know, you know, until you're, you know, you need to, 
I, it was this funny little joke that, you know, we, we used to have, you know, at the place where I was teaching, you know, people would say, you know, how can my, my, my son or daughter, you know, be famous? You know, what can I do to make them a better actor? And I'm like, <laughs> honestly, child act, you know, by and large, you know, you, you kind of need to have gone through some shit. Yeah. <laughs> you need to have, yeah. You know, if you have a bad childhood, you're going to have some stuff. Wrong. You're absolutely <laughs> You know, because um, it's, it's, really, it's pretty rare that, you know, kids just get to be the happy, smiley kids on TV that, you know, that we remember from the 80s. Now it's stuff yeah. is pretty dark. Yeah, that's that's it's very. Yeah, you have to. What is it? You you have to fail in order to succeed. And when it comes to acting, acting, you have to lose a lot of auditions. And then also you maybe have to have that shitty time on set. And then then you will find yourself because I don't. I mean, that's a metaphor, though, for I think almost everything in life, though, Trevor, is. You have to fail before you can get rid of something. Mm-hmm, for sure. Like, that could be, I mean, shit, anything. Like, I mean, one, this podcast, and then before I got on a network, and then two, the comics that I write when I failed a lot there. I got a lot of rejections. Acting got a lot of rejections before in a feature film. You know, it's all that sort of shit like that. It's it's really weird, but it's someone never... Were they really that happy, though, in the 80s? Like you mentioned, he's <laughs> saying, like, the happy-go-lucky kids. I don't know. Were they really that happy? <laughs> I'm talking about their performances on TV were always, you know, very oh. precocious and, very, you know, they didn't have to bring a lot emotionally to the table. <laughs> you know, those kids now, I just actually watched a really interesting documentary, of, you know, I think it was called Showbiz Kids. Um, and it was just, oh, it was a scathing look at, uh, you know, child actors, you know, from the 80s and 90s. It's pretty sad. What so I'm kind of glad I got it. Kind of glad I got into it when I did. Yeah, no shit. I mean, you're like, oh, wait a minute. What is that on, by the way? Because I'm literally writing that down. Where can you catch that? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's on HBO. You know, uh, the guy who directed it is Alex Winter, who did the uh, Bill and uh, Ted's Bogus. He, you know, not Keanu Reeves, but the other guy, Alex Winter. Yeah. He directed it. Sweet. I'm actually going to check that out. That sounds cool. That sounds like a time where I'm maybe going to want to have a beer or something like that when I'm watching it. This, cause, uh... don't, don't watch it when you're in a bad place. Oh God, no! I couldn't even imagine. There's there's that list of things you don't watch. A lot of documentaries are on that list. You don't when yeah. you're in a bad place. You don't like to watch documentaries because they're not going to make you feel any better about life. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but good man, I gotta ask though. Like you're on a Marvel show, obviously, and that's why I mean, Agent Reach Down and shit like that too to be on the show. But were you ever a comic <clears throat> fan beforehand, or was it one of those you got to discover like the Hellstrom uh, and everything like that with being on the show? I was not a huge comic fan growing up, and it wasn't really by choice. It was one of those things where my brother was a huge comic book fan. Like, Ooh. we're talking back in the 80s. He would have those long boxes and sleeves and, you know, of comics, you know, all in plastic, boards on the back. Don't touch these. Wear gloves yeah. when you enter my room, Trevor. <laughs> you know, kind of stuff. Oh, that's you know, so legit I, right there. Oh, man. My, yeah, my brother was a legit collector. So he was always very precious uh, about his comics and his video games, you know. So and and you know, and he was a bit of a bully to me when I when I was a kid. So anything that my brother liked, I uh, I just instinctively hated because you know, <laughs> just <laughs> retribution. So I wasn't, you know, it, it's one of those things where you know, if uh, like a friend of mine says, "Hey, a check of this comic," I'll look at him and be like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" I'm not gravitated towards it, but I can absolutely appreciate the art form. Yeah. Oh, I, it's the thing. Like, not all of them you do, and there's so many people I know. Wait, hold on, phone though. I'm thinking about this now. You get in this role and being on a Marvel show, especially a good one like this. Uh, you it has to be a big middle finger to your brother. Like, oh yeah, you know, I never, you weren't allowed to touch him and read him. I was like, oh hey, bro, I'm on a Marvel show now. Oh god damn yeah. it. I honestly can't say I looked at it through that lens, you know, because time heals old wounds. But um. It, it, I think there's a, there's a, there's definitely a little bit of irony there for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. The sibling rivalry never ends. It, 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 like you think it does, and then next thing you know, like one admits to the other, and it's like, oh shit. <laughs> and it's you'll yeah. probably hear about it one day, Trevor. I hate you for this. <laughs> like you couldn't have uh, got your brother on for a cameo. Like come on. <laughs> oh please, you on this show with the secrecy on this show. Give me a break. That's not right. a chance. I got stories to tell about that. How is it with that? Because I've signed and had the there's shit right now. I wish, I wish I could like talk about, but I doing a podcast is tough when you have all this like NDA backed stuff. Like 
the size of Hoover mm-hmm. Dam holding back that shit. Like, it's tough. But how is it for you doing that? I couldn't even imagine. Well, I mean, it started right from the beginning. It was, uh, you know, I wasn't, you know, when you get the, the email audition, hey, you've got an appointment tomorrow for such and such audition. It doesn't say, you know, you've got an appointment for the Marvel series Hellstrom. It's you have an appointment at 11 a.m. for the second Hulu project. And they call it that because there was a currently another secret Hulu project also shooting in Vancouver. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, let me go, let me, go, let me prepare this, this scene for second Hulu project. So it, the secrecy started right away. That's how it began, not knowing exactly what the show was. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, you know, and then from there, you know, you, you, you kind of quickly learn, oh, you know, you have these audition sides for, you know, whatever character they're casting. And it's not actually scenes from the show. They're more, it's almost like these are character qualities that we're looking for, for the character we're looking for. Um, show us what you do with this. So it almost yeah. becomes like, I mean, while because like, the thing is, you know, when you're an actor, sometimes, you know, you're just going out for, you know, a character that might be on set for a couple days, right? So you, you know, you might get two or three of the, the major scenes that a character plays in so that they can see the choices you're making. And mm-hmm. then you get, you know, and you'll find out, okay, he's in the, a couple other scenes. Whereas this one, it was almost like, here's an acting test to, you know, show us these qualities. And then, you know, when you get cast, then they're like, okay, so that's not your character. This is your character. Mm, so they really throw you around the loop for this shit. Like, and I've heard about it. And I've talked to some people who've done Marvel video games before, some friends of mine, and we've talked, and it's always been the secrecy. But that, that it sounds insane, but I think once you get through those hoops, it's got to be a blast. I mean, it, it was, but I mean, it didn't even really stop there because it was like, because for me, it's actually, I, I had read for a character. Uh, have you seen any of the show yet? I have not yet. I plan on binge watching a lot of it. Well, there's a character that appears in um, episode one and two mm-hmm. uh, that I had originally gone for, and you know the audition scene was. I mean, it was pretty obvious. Like it was, it was this scene where this guy was holding somebody at gunpoint, and you know, and a nun was trying to you know basically talk him down off that emotional ledge, mm-hmm. and it was pretty obvious that the guy. You know, the the character, you know, that I'm reading, you know, he's got two voices in his head, you know, um, Mm -hmm. he's everyone in the audition room is like, okay, so the guy's possessed, right? Got it, got it, you know, um, so then I had auditioned for that and had really, uh, had a really fun time with the first audition and then, uh, casting brought me back to, uh, to meet, uh, the producers, uh, and the, the director of the pilot and it was just me and I think two other guys uh, for this role they'd called back. You can kind of look around the audition room like, okay, the three of us are for that role. And then those guys over there are for a different role. Which is and normal, then, which is incredibly normal. I want to let people know, listen, that, that is very normal to see in, 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 in an audition room. Yeah, and it was, it, was, it was really encouraging because, you know, like in the first audition, there was, you know, 20 or 30 of, you know, um, uh, of, you know, very well-known working actors in Vancouver, you know, like all, any one of these people could do the role. And then they bring back, you know, the ones that they feel like, okay, this is what we're looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, and even at that point, they're still not telling you what the show's called or, or, or anything. And then I remember going in and doing this. <laughs> I, I wear glasses or contacts, but I wore my glasses that day. And oh. then... And uh, my glasses are their transitions. And I was like, oh, crap. Well, I don't want to wear them because there's glare and everything in, in the audition room because of the ring lights they use. Yeah. So I took my glasses off and I realized, oh, shit. Well, I don't, I don't have my contacts in. So I couldn't see the reader's face oh, with any amount no. of clarity. So I was like, and, and the reader is this, is this really wonderful actor, Jay, who's, uh, who's, who's on a Netflix series right now. And, and I was like, damn it. Like, I know he's giving me great stuff to work with. I just can't <laughs> quite clearly see his eyes oh that's a nightmare well it was just whatever you just gotta kind of come you know just gotta I do your to. thing and, yeah and, and feel the moment um and then the director gives me some direction and uh and she was lovely she was so funny she said something to the effect of okay i'm going to give you some direction that if we were in the theater we would work on it for two or three weeks and i'm going to ask you to deliver that direction right now mm-hmm. we had a good laugh you know, so she recognizes, yeah. like, listen, I'm asking you to, to really, I'm th- really throwing a wrench in your choices. And I get that that's difficult. And I was like, okay. So, and then I, I did the scene and, and uh, I, I guess I was like, I kind of, 
looking back in retrospect, I realized in the moment, I'm like, Ugh, I'm not really giving her what she asked for, I think. Um, but I definitely was having some fun with it. And then uh, she said, thanks so much. That was wonderful. And as I'm leaving the room, um, one of the supervising producers, Matt, <laughs> he leans over to his assistant and he's like, I fucking love that guy. That was awesome. <laughs> yes. And, and, he's, and he's not whispering. So I'm like, okay, think that went well. Um, yeah. But I kind, of left, I kind of left the room going, I don't think I got that. But that was a wonderful audition, you know, and I, and I just kind of walked away. And then it wasn't until, uh, I mean, I walked away happy, but it wasn't until about five or six weeks later, uh, my agent calls me and they're like, yeah, they want to see you. Uh, they want to see you for another role. Oh, so shit. that was cool. I mean, in retrospect, that's usually how it fucking goes. Like one, that's an amazing story of like how you think it's going to go right. But when it goes wrong, it actually goes right. And that's all. Well, it's like, not- you never know. I would. I wouldn't even say it went wrong because, you know, what so many people, so many people are just like, they're always focused on this audition and this part. And of course yeah. you yeah. want to get every part you audition for, because, you know, if, you know, if you're bringing your own uniqueness to it, you're, you're, and, and you believe in yourself, you're like, well, this is how this character plays through me. And, and I, and, and it feels natural and it feels fun and it feels great, but you never know if, if you're just a little bit off of what casting is looking for or what the production had in mind, or mm-hmm. maybe you're just not physically right, you know, so you just kind of go in there and you just do it. Um, so, but one thing that I tell a lot of actors like who are starting up is what, you know, you're focused on this audition in this part, but you will likely never see those producers and that director again. The person, the goal for me has always been, build that really great relationship with the casting director because when the audition day is over and they're going over their choices and or their notes for all the people, they're going to say, Oh, okay, we well, we have a toss up between actor A and actor B and maybe I'm actor B. And, you know, that's when casting is going to step in because, you know, that's why casting wins Emmys. You know, they don't just bring in people based on headshots. You know, they, they're a real creative member of the team and they, they, they might say to production, I really think you should go with actor B and let me tell you why. And then what's going to come out of their mouth is going to be based on the years of seeing you come in and crush various auditions successfully getting the part or not. It doesn't matter, but they will have that confidence in you based on a lot of experience and time spent with you and say, this guy makes interesting choices. He can go emotionally. He can be funny. He can be this, you know, so it's, you know, you have to build a great relationship with casting so that when the right opportunity comes along like this one, they're there in your corner. So that when cat, so that when production says, can this guy handle this part? You know, we've only seen him do these two auditions. Casting's like, yes, this guy can handle the part. I'm going to be honest with you, Trevor. That's the best advice I've ever heard for, for acting. And I've heard it before from a teacher of mine, but, but to listeners listening right now, like that's the best advice you could ever fucking give, man. I'm being honest here. That's it's true. That all right there. If people listening don't take anything from this, then we cannot help you because <laughs> the honestly, like that's the way that the beast goes. And there's no better way to put that because I feel like I'd be butchering what you just said because that's good enough for a fucking TED talk. Well, it's just it's one of those things that you just learn over time. It's just when you realize yeah. that. You know, because you can go in and you can crush auditions and and know that you killed them, and then just for some reason, it's just yeah, he was great, but just not what we were thinking. Yeah, it and could you be can't anything. internalize. Yeah. Yeah, and people people talk about rejection as an actor, but you can't internalize the re- the rejection. It's just it's a part of the business. This is yeah. like if I mean if you can't handle not getting every part you audition for, it's like then go be a dentist because mm-hmm. like go do something where you know where you're not technically going on job interviews a hundred times a year. <laughs> oh, know? minimum, minimum a hundred times a year. Let's be honest, like minimum a hundred times. Like, it's true. It's really true. Like anything in the arts, it's acting, it's writing, it's directing, it fuck working in comics. I'll tell you that for free. You know, working in video games, that too. You face <laughs> all this shit of like, you're going to get the rejection and you just got to be prepared for it. If you don't, well, if I you just can't don't... handle the rejection, then you're maybe in the wrong business, you know, and you know, you can just, you can just cognitively reframe that and just don't call it rejection. It's like, I didn't get rejected. I didn't get rejected. And because, you know, thinking back to, you know, kind of 
that TED talk I just gave to you. It's yeah. don't think of it as rejection from production. Think of it as I just, I just built my relationship with casting even stronger. It's true. Just think of it that way. Think it's of it thing. in the most positive way. Because, you know, they're like, if you go into casting, you go into auditions and you can continue to be focused and be grounded and make interesting choices. Um, there, you know, when certain roles come around and, you know, and your face is on that page of submissions, they're not going to think twice. They're going to say, yeah, bring him in. He always, mm -hmm. you know, we love what he does because even they know that as hard as they push for somebody, uh, you know, for, for, for a production to cast, it ultimately comes down to, you know, who the director and producer agree on in the studio. It's true. It's very true. There's so much to it. There's so many dominoes that affect everything. Expect for actors would we'll stick with that is there's so many things involved in the machine. There's so many gears turning. There's so many things and it's just it's a whole machine and whatnot. Yeah, it's true. It's very true. It's very true. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, I've, I've had friends say things like, you know, like, you know, this was meant to be and blah, blah, blah. And so happy for you. I'm like, great. Thank you. But remember, if this show hadn't come to Vancouver for whatever reason, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Yeah. So there's it, just, it, yeah. Like, this character had to be written. You know, they, they, I had to go in and, and do that first. Like so many things kind of like, you know, it's, it's that whole thing about, you know, where, where luck meets opportunity and preparedness or whatever, however the saying goes. It's just, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of luck in, uh, in, uh, in film and TV, you know, but you just kind of have to be prepared for those lucky moments. Yeah. It's true. You have to be prepared. You got to adapt. You got to evolve into them. It's, it's a whole lot of things. I mean, shit, you've been in, the, I'm not trying to age you, I swear to God, but you've been in there for, what, 20 years you've been doing acting so far? Like, it's, yeah, so you've known, like, you've been around the block, you've been through it all, especially, oh, God, fuck, the last 20 years, especially of film, television, everything like that, it's been evolving so much. It evolves like modern-day computers, like, there's a new one, it's just something new every other damn year, and the way things are done, and nowadays, holy well, shit, but... Yeah, but what's interesting as an actor is it's like, you know, as, as the industry or a city evolves, so do you, you know, because yeah, I've gone, yeah. I've gone from, you know, being funny, fat guy, stoner type to young cop to, you know, playing lots of, you know, kind of mean, racisty, asshole, rapey type guys to, you know, now playing this game, you know, so as you evolve and change uh, as a person, you know, you, you just, you get to explore more based on how the industry sees you yeah oh yeah exactly and the fun part is you get to get developed into this role or enveloped i should say into different fun roles and such like that too and these worlds that they're part of like recently like you know we should talk about the show else from so we maybe how is it going? i mean <laughs> they might they might enjoy us doing that because we could go on about this forever about like acting and the film industry and such like that too because man i love it but how is it being in this world now, when you got this part and you went in with the secrecy and such like that too, when you got in and you're start, you're there on set day one and being enveloped in this kind of like dark kind of world, what was that like for you? Because it's it's a different one well, maybe than what you've had to face before, maybe in your career. Sure. Well, let me let me backtrack just a touch. So I get the phone call for the uh, for the second for the second role they want to see me for. Like they yes. they want to see you tomorrow. 10 a.m. and I'm like, Ugh, I can't. Uh, I, I had just I had just booked like a, a voiceover gig, and I was going to be in studio for a couple days uh, recording an audiobook. And I was like, oh, I can't. Uh, and I was and I was just really just in that zone. Like I had I had read this really dense book and had been preparing it for a week, and I was about to go in and start it. And I'm like, and I was just that's where my head was. Mm. And like Marvel calls, and I tell my agent, Yeah, I can't make it. Oh, <laughs> and then she's like. Uh, okay, and I'm like, I really can't. I'm in studio. So she tells casting, and then I'm in studio the next day, and I'm recording, and then I get, you know, like a another message, like, uh, can you put yourself on tape today? I'm like, I'm in studio. Like, I can't. I'm, yeah, I know. Yeah, I you're can't. working. Yeah, you're like, I don't even probably have my phone on me. Like, I'm surprised I do. I, I, there's nothing we can then, do here. Yeah. And then I look at the sides, you know, again, and I'm like, gosh, I look at this, and I'm and I, and I and I don't know what I was thinking, but I look at the sides and i see you know they give you know some fake character name and, and it says you know his character name john whatever 60s and i'm like well okay he's in the 60s they, they're not gonna me. they're not gonna cast me they're looking for somebody in the 60s you know and i had forgotten uh, you know another cardinal rule which is you know just forget what you think they want 
if if casting is asking for you, then they think that you're right for the character. So it doesn't matter what's on the page or what production has typed up or whatever. It doesn't matter. So just, but I was like, I can't. And then finally, um, I was on a break from uh, from recording uh, one day, and then my agent calls me. She's like, okay, Trev, the showrunner from Marvel is asking for you by name. Please oh put yourself on tape. And that's when I was like, let me drop everything. <laughs> yeah, no, when they ask you by name, it's like, okay, I got to go. <laughs> it's, and it's Marvel, so you know it's a big gig. Let's go. Yeah, because I... I was like, and I wasn't like, you know, whatever, but I was like, oh, okay, it's just going to be like another, you know, huge audition, and then I'll go for a callback and whatever. I figured, I, maybe I kind of figured in the back of my mind, like, oh, if they're going to do callbacks in a week, then they'll just bring me in for that, and then I'll go. Yeah. Um, not Eric, but I was just like, I'm just busy. But I quickly just kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, I read over the sides again, and and when I was like, and I read the sides, and it was this, um, and it was this guy. It was very, it's it's very, there's, it's very nondescript. It was like. This guy who was giving a job interview to a to a young pretty woman, mm -hmm. you know, and he makes comments, you know, at a, at a corporation, and he makes comments about how, you know, how she's very, very dressed very well, and how that sweater is nice and tight, and you know, none of this baggy athleisure wear like you know other women wear. And I was just like, God, this guy's a douche. And yeah. I'm like, and I'm like, yeah. And that was like, this is fun. And then I just decided to play just, just the douchiest Weinstein I could be. Oh, yes. And and I just and literally I think you know uh like we rolled on it twice and I was like I'm good. I don't want to do another take. That was just and I sent it off and uh, you know you know and then uh, next day back in the studio and then I think that evening uh my agent was like uh okay you're on hold for that role. You're going to network for approval. I'm like I, what? Uh okay. You all right. It was real quick, and then, um, and then they said, uh, and then I think it was like later the next day. They're like, "Okay, so you've been approved." For oh no, no, actually, no. It was, it was like four days later. Actually, and so at this point, I'd gone from like I don't have time for this to waiting by the phone for the phone call, uh -huh. and then I think I, I, you know, I had to wait over the course of a four day weekend. I think it was Thanksgiving weekend in, in Canada last year. Yeah, so it was a long weekend, and I'm like, I had to wait till like the, the Tuesday or the Wednesday. And they're like, yep, you're approved for the role. It's he's not a businessman. Um, and I guess I can you're actually, you know what? You're gonna be the first interview that I can see. Like it can this is this a spoiler free interview or no, we're gonna say spoilers on this one because I, I like to because people would definitely like okay, we'll just say spoilers from here on out. We'll say that. Well because spoilers here on the out. Show, the show dropped a couple days ago, so yeah, you know it's fine. It's, you can spoil it, spoil it. Yeah, you're good. Plus, what, what I'm about to say you realize 30 seconds into my character's time on screen. So, you know, no big spoiler. So they say, so you're not a businessman. You're a Roman Catholic priest who's been possessed by a demon. That's a fucking 362. <laughs> if you've ever heard of one in your life, like what? Like, how did I get this role? What is this? And I was like, wow. hey, loading emoji times three. Yeah, uh, Jesus. So, you know, when you talk about stepping into this world and what was day one like on set, I was like, it was, it was a lot. It was, uh, it was, it took, it took me a while to get my head wrapped around exactly what show I was working on for sure. Oh my God. Yeah. It, it had to be like, it's like, that's just like the three, you, you just don't know what to do at that point. You're like, okay, I'm in kind of a little bit of shock here. Let me try to collect my thoughts. Like, <gasps> shit. And it's like, okay, okay. Here. Did you? instantly try to go when you got the name of your character did you try to google your character be like i need to dive into this let me look at books let me look at marvel wikipedia let me look at this guy <laughs> holy crap no stupidly i did none of that really because, yeah because the thing is it was like and it wasn't until like you know much later on that i i, I was having other people tell me about how my character appeared in the comics and you know how he was utilized and you know and and you know, different arcs that, you know, the, the, the character was on. And I was like, well, that's all great, but I don't know if any of that is going to translate to the show. And because I was just kind of coming in, like, because the show was in production, they were, I, I came in, you know, uh, episode four until the end of season one. Mm -hmm. So, 
you know, it was already a moving train. It was, so it was very quick. It was okay. You know, once the, the, once I was booked for the role, then it was okay. Here are your days. Here are how many episodes you're going to be. You're going to be, you know, this was last October. This was going down and it's like, okay, so you're going to be busy till March. Um, and, and then it was like, can you get to the table read tomorrow night? And I was like, it was, so it was very just when, and you know, and then it was wardrobe fitting and, you know, and you're going to be on set in a couple of days and here are your scenes. And I was just like, what's going on? Yeah, and shit. It, was, it, it was more about, so if anything, I just, because, you know, you're playing a demon and it's like, there's not a lot of human experience that you can say, well, this is a lot like being a demon. So, yeah. Yeah, if you're sane, at least, if you don't live, like, a very extreme lifestyle, most definitely. So, you know, dealing with, like, the subject matter and the, the different scenes that, I, that I, was, I was working in, at least in the first episode, I just kind of, I don't know, I, I, I try to think of them not as demon, but just as people who, who like to basically fuck with other people's minds. Mm, that's a good way to go you about know? it, yeah. Because, like, cause, you know, um, who is it? The, uh, the writer of the first episode, Sheila Wise, uh, she's one of the story editors on the show, and she was really, really great at the first table read, and she's like, you know, these demons, they, they see people as as me, as food, and not necessarily in, the, in the, the sense of, like, consumption, but, like, people's fears and messing with people and making mm. them afraid is yeah. what... He, what, what feeds them and fuels them and it gets them off and they they take a great amount of pleasure from it. I'm like, oh, okay, why can't I identify with that? You know? Yeah. So once once you start, you know, kind of, you know, um, taking the whole demon thing out of the equation and just thinking about them as a as a character, as a person with a personality and needs and wants, it uh, it simplifies the process a little bit. Oh, yeah. It's like, that's the way you have to go about it, too. They're like, I want you to be, you're going to be a centaur in this film. Well, do I have to think about like, uh, okay, shit, centaur. Like, what's relatable about a centaur? Uh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You're uh, like, but like a demon, like, you take that, like, no wonder she's the damn writer. Let's be honest here. That's pretty good. But you, you got to find, it's going to sound funny when we're talking about a demon, but you got to find the human aspect of it. Like, find the mm -hmm. human aspect that's just so relatable to it that you're like, oh, I've met someone, heard about, or was this type of person before. Like, you have to do that with it. And doing that, though, one, that takes extreme talent, and that's probably why you got the role to do that, because most people are going to think demon and go into, oh, I'm going to be this monster escorted person. Shit like that. No, 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 no. You got to find a human factor in there and just be go through the lines, betray a demon a little bit, but... Internally, you have to act like kind of like a human, just more evil in this sense, like that, and that's why it makes good acting. That's what makes good acting. And and because the the show was was so secretive, it was like I was you know for a while there, I was I was literally only getting my pages and my scenes. You know, you'd you'd be there at the table read for the whole episode and get kind mm -hmm. of a a sense of the tone and the humor and some of uh, and and, then, and you know and, and watching uh, the series regulars around the table doing their thing you're like okay i was I'm, i was getting a clearer idea of the show that i was working on every moment that i was working on it then as the season progressed and you know cuz the, the writers they get you know the writers and the producers of course they get to see all the dailies so they see how what they've written and the actors they've cast and everything how that's being portrayed you know in unedited you know raw uh, clips mm -hmm. and then they start to get a better sense of you as an actor, and then they start writing for you, but also like, so they have this idea of where they think the character's gonna go, but then they start to see you work with what they're giving you, and then they start to just make subtle changes and write for you a little bit more. So it becomes this, you know, um, evolutionary process as the season goes. So, you know, you're you're kind of just getting more and more in the skin of your character you know, with, with every moment you get to breathe in their skin, I guess. All this right here proves why you are the professional, Trevor. <laughs> it really does. Holy shit, sir. Like, th there had to be some moments you've had on set, though, that were extremely fun. Can you talk about any of those? Or, like, one of your uh, favorite moments on set? Because we all have them. I, I have some of mine, and it wasn't even when the cameras were rolling. Like, do you have any favorite moments from set that you can talk about? Well, yeah, I mean, at this point, because the show's dropped, I'm, you know, the NDA is lifted, and I'm, and anybody... Oh, that's true. I mean, if you're listening to the podcast, I mean, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but fast forward now. Um, yeah. 
I guess, like, you know, honestly, it was like, there were so many pinch me moments uh, along the way. I think, you know, there's, okay, well, there's this, there's this one thing, there's a cool, there's one actor on the show that I was a big fan of coming into the show, uh, Elizabeth Marvel. She plays uh, the character Mother. Yeah. And yeah. I had seen her in, I had, I had just watched her in the uh, the the Netflix uh, miniseries called Unbelievable, and I hated her character. Like she was loathsome by design. Um, yeah. And, uh, I had uh, I was a big fan of her when she was on House of Cards for a season or two. Like I just oh, I was she like, was Man, yeah, such a powerful you know strong woman and an actress. I just I love her to death. Um, and then when I found out that I was going to be, I was shooting episode six. And then I, I was working with uh, with Daniel Cudmore, who who plays uh, Nurse uh, Spivey on the show. And he was like, "Oh, I read uh, I read the next episode. You got some good scenes with Mother." And I was like, "Shut up!" <laughs> I was I was because she was like, I mean, I love I love this cast, top to bottom. They're all amazing, wonderful people. But but Beth was the one coming into the show that I was like, "I'm just I'm a, I'm a fan." Yeah. And when you get yeah with somebody that you're a fan of um that was cool um and you know and like so in my first scene with her <laughs> she she throws my character across the room and through a table and i'm like Ooh. does it get better <laughs> no does it get better? no it does not get better because you're like i get to be thrown across the room by my like by a huge person by this big name person i'm a huge fan there's no better thing than that like that's well, let's- Let's be clear. It was my stunt double, Stu Cook, who got oh. thrown across the room. But still, <laughs> I picked it up. Character, on... You still get to work yeah. with her. That's the thing. Like, you get... Fuck, there was a moment... I can relate to that. There was a moment where I was on a feature film, Max Reload and Other Blasters, an indie film feature. And I was working, and they said, oh, okay, well, we need you to come in for this. You're going to be a reporter and stuff. Like, okay, okay, okay. And they were looking, and I'm like, look, I see him walk through the door. And I'm like, oh, over this way, sir. And Greg Grumberg is sitting around. I'm like, wait, what? And like, yeah, hey, you can be working with him. Oh shit! <laughs> no, and I'm like the big nerd icon, like guy I've been a fan of his acting. I love his acting. And they're like, yeah, hey, you get to go work and talk to him and stuff like that. Like, holy shit! Blew my brain out. Like, I was like, oh yeah. my god! Like, are you kidding me? Like, uh, nice guy too, by the way. I had hey, him on. Greg, here, okay. here's my headshot and resume. Give this to JJ <laughs> Abrams. <laughs> you wouldn't would think I did that. I did not. I actually invited him onto a podcast of film school I do, and he came on as a guest, and we just geeked out. I'm like, fuck this life. That's I don't know what life cool. I'm living on. That's oh. super cool. Yeah, like and we just that's... geeked out. He did he forgot. He's like, oh my god, I do remember you. I thought you were familiar. It's like, you know what? I worked hard in life and I can die happy. <laughs> that's sweet. Uh... But I mean, you know. Beyond that, that one moment of, uh, you know, that one, that, those couple of days of working kind of exclusively with Beth, you know, that was just kind of, that was the actor giddy, like, oh, I get to work with one of my heroes. You know, I remember there was this, this one moment uh, on set, I think it happens in like episode nine. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to spoil too much, but, you know, there's this one character and, you know, she's holding a knife and she's contemplating doing something with it. And then I kind of step into the room and I'm like, let me t- take that for you. <laughs> and I get to like Thor's hammer the knife out of her hand into oh. mine. And then there's this cool sequence right after that that kind of picks up in the next episode where I'm like, you know, uh, I get knocked out on the ground and I get to move stuff with my mind. And it's it's cold and it's raining outside. And, you know, some of the members of the cast and crew were just like, oh, let's get this going. And uh, the, the, it was a it was a big scene with lots of angles and lots of actors. And people were just getting a little bit kind of like, OK, let's do this. And I'm lying on this, on this cold floor and I'm like laughing to myself on the inside. I'm covered in fake plaster and and I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I'm like, I've just been quote unquote knocked out and I'm about to move something with my mind and skewer somebody and I'm on a Marvel TV show doing all of this. It yeah. does not get better than this. And if it does, I want to know. And somebody tell me what life is better. <laughs> like, what so, are you like? How do you get bigger? And how do you get better? Like, you know, I, you're absolutely right. And one, that sounds metal as hell of a scene to do. That like that. Mm, that just it's like the scene that had to be awesome. The film was because it kind of made me think of it. Like when you're 
the character takes the weapon and goes into their hands. Like the badass scene I watch as an actor, I'm like, holy shit. And as a writer, I'm like, holy shit is an X-Men first class where Magneto does the thing where he goes and kills the Nazis. If you remember that or seen it, mm-hmm. like that's the scene in there where you're like, damn son. And that scene you describe right now, I'm not having the same feeling of damn son. <laughs> like, Oh, yeah, it's just, get to do fun like you know comic book superhero type shit i mean yeah, that's yeah. the kind of thing where you know when when you're working in in the marvel universe that's where you kind of get to level up you know the coolness factor and the geek factor just personally as an actor it's, it, it, it was pretty cool i like it I, I i love it dude i love it well i gotta say that we're coming near the end of the episode because i don't want to take too much more of your time today but trevor i gotta say this has been a blast having you on the show honestly it's been a blast well, this has been great. I mean, I'm just I'm I'm so happy to finally be able to talk to somebody and not have to lie about my character because in, in, until Friday, everyone was like, "What can you tell us about your character?" I'm like, uh, "Vamp improv lie," because yeah. like thirty seconds into my 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 first scene on on camera, it's like, "Oh, he's not this person. He's this." So I've pretty much been lying to the press for the last couple of months. Which, you know what, though, is so common. I mean, shit, trailers lie to us in order to keep spoilers away. So let's be honest here. That's normal if you're in Marvel, that if someone's lying about something, then you know it's going to be good. It's like, okay, that's fine. (laughs) If you don't want to be spoiled, like, too bad like that, like, it's got to be such a reliever. It's kind of like, oh, my God, like, like, oh, you can tell me the secret? Like, a recess playground or some shit. Like, oh, my God, thank you. I wanted to tell someone, like, oh, John and Sam kiss. Like, whatever the hell. It's this whole... You can unload the stress moment. It's got to be that for you. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. And I still haven't even, you know, I've I've kind of uh, watched uh, the first two episodes. I'm I'm trying to just pace it because I know that, you know, so I haven't even seen the the whole the whole season yet. But I'm just trying to, you know, I'm not going to binge through them. I'll, I'll watch them in due course and mm-hmm. just uh, just enjoy this time, uh, you know, while it's here. Yeah, until the exactly. next thing. Exactly. Do you have anything upcoming? I mean, obviously, check everyone check out the show, Hellstrom. But do you have anything else? Like maybe you can tease for people out there. Plug away, good sir. This is the time to do it. There is uh, something in the works that I can't actually drop the name of. It's a oh, it's a pilot. Uh, it's a pilot that uh, I'm involved with. Um, we'll see if it goes. Yeah. Um, re- really cool you know uh really cool concept with this one but you know again nda can't talk about it yeah and uh beyond that you know the the film industry is is slowly creaking back to life so you know we're just trying to do it as 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 well and safe as we can up here in vancouver it's true you're doing way better up there than us down here in the south of america <laughs> say it at least here. Right. yeah and it's whole thing we won't get into that but trevor man you have you Huh? Your masks. Oh yeah. Wear oh, your fuck mask. Yeah. Please just do that. It's not that hard. Please do it. Listen, if you're listening to the show, obviously you're a fan of fucking masks. We're living the dream. Come on. Uh besides the point though, Trevor, man, do you have any social media you want to plug for people? Oh geez. Um Uh-oh. yeah. If you want to look at uh you know my Instagram, it's uh Trevor Roberts Actor. I'm gonna be posting you know, some, some stills and stuff of my character and some, uh, some fun other stuff uh, from Hellstrom in the next couple of days. And then uh, I am on Twitter, which I hate, at the Trev Rob. So part of my first and last name. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pretty much link everything from uh, Instagram over to Twitter anyway. Okay, I mean, yeah, it works. Nobody really likes Twitter these days. Let's be honest. Nobody really does. Oh, it's a fire, right. but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but already good man. Well, thank you for coming on the show, boss. And I will let the agency know and whatnot with everything publisher and everybody know when the episode comes out, and I'll be sure to tag you in it. Great, that would be awesome. Sweet, you have a good rest of your day, good man. Thank you for coming on the show. You too, man. Been a pleasure. All right. Peace. Bye.